Welcome to Getting to Know You. This idea was formed by Betty Osan, who felt that we needed to know the people we live with better than we get to know them if you're just playing a game or bridge or a quick lunch. So we thought about fireside chat, but decided in Arizona that didn't make sense. So getting to know you became what we've called it. And I have Eleanor here, and I want you to pronounce your name. Yeah, his name is Scrimshire. Scrimshire. Eleanor Scrimshire. And you said it was Scottish. It, yes. It must be part German, too, because it sounds part German, but mm -hmm. uh, they've traced it back to Scotland. Scotland. Spelled a different way. Mm -hmm. I don't know what way, but mm -hmm. I've had relatives go there, so. Uh-huh. Have you visited Scotland? No. We landed in Ireland when we had gone to Norway, so I've, that's the only part of there that I've been uh -huh. in. Uh-huh. Well, I have spoken a lot to you, and... Goodyear and you go together. Do you want to explain that? Well, when I started going with my husband, he was, I'm from Roswell, New Mexico, and he had been uh, stationed, he was in the Army stationed on the East German border, and he was there for Christmas, and I was home for the holidays, and we started dating. And um, anyway, Long story short, we dated about a year. He was in California. I was in Texas at the University of Texas. And uh, anyway, we got engaged and we got married February of uh, 19, what am I trying to say, 2858, I put that down. But um, he was with a personal tire dealer in Bakersfield. He was in Bakersfield, California. So. We got married, and about a month later, we drove to L.A. and interviewed by Goodyear Tire, because they sold their tire, and he agreed to go with the corporation, and that made a big difference in our lives, mm -hmm. because we moved around quite a bit, but we also got to travel quite a bit, which was certainly an added bonus. Mm -hmm. so, Plus, you had a very good built-in babysitter. when when you traveled and your children were my, home. Yeah, my mother who uh -huh. was the widow in Roswell. She would come out and keep, we had three kids, Rusty, Tim, and Tracy, and a dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would come out and babysit, so that helped. But speaking of the dog, our, our last child was born in San Diego. And you're, we were up on a hill, and that dog would get out, my poor mother would pay the <laughs> neighbor kids to go find the dog because he'd take off and go down that side of the hill. <laughs> so, and also once we were gone and we lived in Tustin, California, and she saw the fires where there was about October, and that's a real windy season in California, and she saw the man next door up on his roof watering the roof. So she said, I started to put the kids and the dog in the car, and I thought, where am I going, you know, so uh, that didn't happen. But no, nothing bad ever happened while she was there, mm -hmm. and I think she enjoyed it, and we mm -hmm. certainly appreciated it. Yes, I think there are a lot of grandparents that would think it was fun. Yeah, for a temporary, to to know, yes, temporary yes, fun. Yes. yes, knowing when it was going to end. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, uh, we we moved around to Santa Barbara, San Diego, Tustin, Apple Valley, Sacramento. We were in Sacramento while Ron Reagan was governor there. We mm -hmm. just happened to come in when he came and left in 75 to go back to Southern California. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting because mm -hmm. uh, while we were in Sacramento, my husband was in charge of the blimp, the Goodyear blimp that was up there. And so Ronald Reagan wanted to ride the blimp, so my husband got it all arranged. And that day he couldn't go, but his secretary and son went, and my husband <laughs> went up with them. Mm -hmm. So the blimp was a big deal. I got to ride on it several times, but all our friends got to ride on it And mm -hmm. uh, when it would come to Southern California. And even over here, when we got over here, they bring it down to Palm Springs, that windy road from here to Palm Springs and come through there and bring it over here. Well, now it's everywhere mm -hmm. for the football games. Mm -hmm. There's more than one nowadays. Yes. <laughs> but it's interesting to ride in it. And somebody once asked him, 
we'd like to get married in it. There's only six people that can get in there. I think people think it's you're down or up in the balloon park. But it is a fun ride, but the weather has to be just right. So people have to understand. Mm -hmm. They might have to reschedule. Mm -hmm. And entertaining was a lot of your position as a corporate wife. Yes. M mostly in hotels and things, because people were all strung out all over and to get to one area, but we did a lot of that. And on the travels, when he was with Goodyear, we were hosts for the trips. So there's a lot of responsibility with that too, when mm -hmm. things come up. Mm -hmm. But he then in 1992, in 1983, I'm sorry, we moved from California over here because uh, he went in business with a private person here. It was still the tire business. But they wanted him to move to Akron, Ohio, and we wanted to stay in the West, so that made that move. But then we got to go on some trips as guests, which mm -hmm. was fun. So, mm -hmm. And you've been many, many, many places. Yeah. How many countries? Uh, I don't know, but I, the first one I went to was Caracas, Venezuela, and that's when I was in college. A friend's father worked for an oil company in Caracas, and she invited a friend of mine and me to come, and that was my first experience flying at night. And of course, we were young college girls, and so those pilots let us come up to the cockpit, <laughs> which is certainly a no-no now. Mm -hmm. But uh, then I wanted to be an airline stewardess, mm -hmm. and my cousin was gonna go with me, and when we graduated, her father decided that we would be nothing but glorified waitresses, and here we had a degree, so. <laughs> Without tips. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that went down, the, but that's fine, because then I met my husband, and, mm -hmm. and we traveled a lot, so. Mm -hmm. But Crocus was cousin? my first place. And what about your cousin? Uh, she got married and later got divorced. So <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. Uh, she was in Texas and she mm -hmm. stayed in Texas. So. And you had a very long marriage. 60 years, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I knew him from before we ever got married or ever started dating. So it just made a lot of sense to mm -hmm. get married. And and, and we have got, he's, he was one of 13, so we had a lot of relatives, a lot of big reunions and, and get-togethers, and especially when we moved here, this is kind of the center, because we have relatives in Oklahoma, Texas, and California. So mm -hmm. we were kind of the center, and we had some big get-togethers here and reunions, mm -hmm. so it was fun. We're down to two of us now, another wife and myself. So mm -hmm. our generation is gone mm -hmm. now, but we've got a lot of, there's a lot of cousins, nieces and nephews. And if I remember correctly, he was in the middle of those 13? He was, well, he was the last boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, he had brothers that were twins, and they mm -hmm. lived to be 90. We went to their 90th birthday. But, uh, and the wife of one of the twins and myself, she's in Roswell, New Mexico, and I'm here. And mm -hmm. we're the two left of this generation. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a, it was quite fun. My mother was one of seven, so I was used to going to reunions in Texas. Uh -huh. So I've traveled and I've been to reunions a lot of them. <laughs> and the entertaining, I think, sounded interesting because you didn't have to prepare the food. No. <laughs> so. But you mean with Goodyear or, mm -hmm. yes, with we were at places usually. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved here, uh, we we became friends with some ASU graduates, and so my husband became very involved with ASU, even though we didn't go here. He was on the Sun Angel board, and my daughter w worked for the Sun Angel, so we got to go on trips with our daughter, with him, and with ASU, different mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. for games and things, so it was a lot of fun when we got here. It's a good thing you liked people. Yes, my, pers <laughs> my husband was a people person. And we have a picture of the two of you at a younger, Yes. I don't know if that picture can be seen. Um, can we move it in? I, I do not know what year that was. I probably didn't put it on it. That's why it's good now. They, on your iPhone you get the year and the yes. date, so right. you don't have to worry. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. But you said he liked he liked to travel, and both of you look like very warm 
engaging people. <laughs> yes. He liked to tell stories and talk. So. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I, we went to a lot of, I think the most different country we went to was Japan. When I think back with their customs and the way they lived, mm -hmm. I would say that was the most different. Of course, we didn't go to the, um, like Egypt and those kind of, mm -hmm. those countries, so that would have been too. Mm -hmm. But we went to uh, New Zealand and Australia, and that was far. Japan mm -hmm. was far. Those take a long, a long time to get yeah, there. To get there, <laughs> and then sometimes you would take side trips too. Mm -hmm. They would take us, uh, like in Rome, we got to go to St. Peter's and not the Vatican, but we did get into St. Peter's. Got to go in the church there, and we were in Florence. We went to Italy, and then. We were in Paris once and took the train down to Provence to mm -hmm. the wine country. Mm -hmm. And what happened coming back there, uh, my friend and I lost our husbands in the crowd and we knew what time the train was going to leave. So we were, <laughs> we looked around and finally we just thought we better get on. Well, they did the same thing. They were looking for us and they finally hopped on the rear car <laughs> and came up and we, there we were. But that was interesting. The train was fun. and. Mm -hmm. We were also on a train in Japan from Kyoto to Osaka, mm -hmm. bullet train, mm -hmm. those are fast, mm -hmm. so that was interesting. Fast and clean. Yes, and the Japanese are very clean, non-cluttered people. Every, it seems like every place we went, they didn't have a lot of objects around, mm -hmm. like we tend to collect mm -hmm. in our culture, and we brought a lot of souvenirs back from different places, and I've enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm here, there's not room for all that. <laughs> When you would travel, were your children interested in the stories? A little bit. I think they'd be more interested now. They didn't, they just do, we were gone, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then in later years when we lived here, they were in out of college and getting married and so forth, mm -hmm. so they were never part of that. They just were home with my mother and that's what they remembered. But mm -hmm. Now marriage. You're an expert on weddings, right? <laughs> I'm becoming one. <laughs> They're very different now. I have one, two grandchildren have gotten married, one during the COVID, and I got to go by iPhone. My, one of my granddaughters had her iPhone and I had mine and so she took pictures of the bride and groom coming up to the aisle, getting married, coming back down, and my grandson leaned in and said, hi, Grandma, he knew I was sick. <laughs> and then last November, we had a wedding of a granddaughter, and we got one in March and one in April. Mm -hmm. And then I can retire. <laughs> yeah. That's been fun, but uh -huh. I'm glad they're there. I'm, well, the, the COVID prevented a lot of people from getting mm -hmm. married at the time, mm -hmm. right. so now, they're all, you You have to decide if you want a big, fairly big wedding, you have to know a year ahead. You can't just say we want to get married in March mm -hmm. when it's January or February. You're talking a year from mm -hmm. now. Nearly. A lot of planning. Yes. So you get wedding planners, which we didn't have, and mm -hmm. you know, my mother would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, it's a big event now mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And yet, there are more younger people not getting married, so. Uh, you know, I was, most of my friends and I got married right out of college. Uh -huh. I, we just did that, I don't, anyway, I happened to meet the right person. But now my grandchildren are 29 and 30. Mm -hmm. They've had careers and still have them, and so they're more established. We just mm -hmm. started out with hardly anything mm -hmm. and uh, built up. And getting to know you was really part of the marriage, wasn't it? You didn't know each other. No, I thought in the way that, that we weren't together that much the year mm -hmm. before we were married because I was in New Mexico and we were saving up money. So when he came to the door, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> who is this man? Uh -huh. No, I'd known him, so it worked out. Mm -hmm. And you have the same values. I mean, it, some don't know that well, but I knew who he was, and he was very military. And he lived that way. We were always early to everything. We were mm -hmm. never late. So, mm -hmm. and so it's 
I, I agree that the military helps. I, I wish my children had gotten it, not to be in any war zone, but to get the training and, and the responsibility. Mm -hmm. that, and my husband, well, he went to college on a football scholarship. He put himself through college, and it was a military school. At that time, it was the Korean conflict, and they wanted to go in as officers. So all, all his friends were in the military mm -hmm. school and in the Army mm -hmm. or another mm -hmm. branch of the service. And he, he knew how to organize. Mm -hmm. and, and delegate. Mm -hmm. He tried that at home. <laughs> Didn't work as well. But I wasn't. I was a captain too. Or <laughs> two captains. Yes. No. <laughs> or two generals, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> and um, when you got married, was that a big wedding or a small wedding? Well, for a small town, it was fair. It was about two hundred people. Yeah. That's a big and wedding. And he's from there, and being that we both were from there, it makes mm -hmm. a lot of people, and we had people coming from out of town, a lot of his friends were spread out. And mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a big wedding, and I had a, a friend of mine, I had her dress, she she had worn, I mean, people go out now and spend a lot mm -hmm. of money for dresses, but I used her dress and it was fine, and, mm -hmm. and it worked out. And then you didn't have big dinners then, we had like cake, nuts, and Mm -hmm. And champagne punch, mm -hmm. so it was very more simple, I'll put it that way. And your mom was widowed for a long time. Yes. Exactly. Well, she was widowed after my, my first son was born in Riverside, California. She came out at the time, and she was with me a week. She went back to New Mexico, and my father died a week later, so he never met any of the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And he had been called, he went to the military school in 1918, and he was uh, called in, well, his dad died when he was 21, so he had to come back and support his mother. But mm -hmm. he had gone to Melissa Carey School, and then he was at Dartmouth when that happened, so mm -hmm. he died fairly young. My mother passed away at 98, so I don't know if I, I seem to have the long genes mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. Dartmouth was an interesting school. Mm -hmm. Did he like it? He and his friend went there. I think so. I don't remember asking him that much about it. And he wasn't there that long because since it, when his father died, he came back. Mm -hmm. When he moved to New Mexico, it was still a territory. He was eight. He was born in 1900, so he moved there when he was eight. And it was still a territory like Arizona. Mm -hmm. it became a state in 1912. He was born in Texas. All my relatives were born in Texas. Mm -hmm. And you have a bit of a Texas accent. I guess. <laughs> I hear it when I hear an answering machine. My grandkids kept saying I did. I think it wore off a little bit as the longer I was away. But, uh -huh. And when we first moved to California, they gave me a rough time. The Californians did. Mm -hmm. I think California and Texas are very competitive because they're big. They're almost self-contained mm -hmm. and, and could just get by on their own, and that's kind of how they look at it. We can leave the secede from the Union and make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Californians were just as bad, so. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's true today? Well, I think, I don't know. I, California, I'm glad, I love living there and I love the state, but it's not the same no, as when isn't. we left 40 mm -hmm. years ago or so. Uh, it, uh, I hate to say what I, it could be self-sustaining, but I'm afraid they're getting, I don't know what's happened to it. Mm -hmm. In Texas, same way, of course, they both have the borders. You've got border states mm -hmm. that have to get the influx of the uh, immigrants coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's a good thing or what. I mean, they can be, we need the labor, but I, when a long time ago, people had to go through legal ways mm -hmm. to become citizens, and that's kind of bypassed now, so mm -hmm. I don't really know the answer. <laughs> but most of the family lived in New Mexico and Texas. Texas uh -huh. My and he was from Oklahoma, and actually he was one of 13, and his father passed away when he was young, so it left the mother with a lot of 
most of the older ones were married, and that's how he ended up in New Mexico. He had brothers in Roswell. Mm -hmm. So his mother moved there with two of his sisters and himself. Mm -hmm. So he had one younger sister and the rest were older. The older ones kind of took care of the younger ones mm -hmm. in those and days. I, I heard there were twins mm -hmm. in the family. Were you ever wanting to have twins? <laughs> <laughs> not really. If, if the first one was, yes, but not number three, and then all of a sudden you've got four. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. uh, they're the only ones that I know of mm -hmm. in the family, so mm -hmm. I guess it's in there. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a twin. Did you? I thought it would be great to have a, Somebody a brother oh, the well, same yeah. age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I was the oldest of us three, so I've always kind of been the boss, I guess mm -hmm. you'd say. Well, when I was little, I invented a brother, oh. and his name was Dooner, and Dooner did all the bad things I did but didn't want to be responsible for, <laughs> and my parents went right along with it. So, did they? Yes. Dooner did it? Dooner did it. Did you have brothers or sisters? No, no I brothers only. or sisters. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. So, I thought you were having sure. a twin brother would have been fun. Yeah. <laughs> well. So. But um, your children live here. Yes, they all live in the area, which I'm glad they. Uh, one went. They were all born in California. My three children were, and several of my grandchildren. And we came here. They were all college or older, and pretty soon they migrated, lived with us a little bit, and so there. So we've got to be part of our grandchildren's lives, which was great. You mm -hmm. know, we didn't have all the responsibility, but we could. Go to the things, and we were there for him a lot. So, mm -hmm. you know, there was a, a book written on what do children want that money can't buy, and the, the most powerful thing was generational, three generations that they felt anchored and mm -hmm. more. That's more. what we tried to do, even though we moved around, and now my. My children are grandparents, and I noticed they're a lot more of their children's lives, grandchildren. But when we got married, we were moving around, and we didn't have anybody in a lot of the towns that we did. And probably the loneliest I got was when we lived in, my husband had the store in Victorville, and I lived in Apple Valley, and I got myself out there with an 18-month-old, and I was out in the <laughs> desert, and I thought, this, I was smarter when we moved. We moved to Santa Barbara. So mm -hmm. it was a little smarter then. Mm -hmm. We lived right in town. And of all the places you lived, what was your favorite? Well, it depend, depends on the time. When we moved up to Sacramento, I wasn't thrilled about that, and neither were my kids, but we just loved it. Our kids were mid, like mid-school, and we bought a ski boat, and we bought it on the Delta, a used mm -hmm. one, so we would have to go and they'd lower it into and we were all over the Delta, and if you've ever been on rivers like that and were trying to read the map, I couldn't tell if it, <laughs> I'd get worried because it would start to get dark, and I thought, is that an island or is that a peninsula, you know? <laughs> but it was really interesting, and then we moved to Lake Fal Folsom and put our boat there so we could ski and had a good time with mm -hmm. it. But it depended on the age of the children. They were a good age for that area, but then we moved back to Southern California, and that's where we were fairly close to Disneyland, so we had a lot of visitors, relatives <laughs> and visitors. And uh, actually, Goodyear had a room in Disneyland, which we could go to. It was off Main Street, so our friends could, we could go use, the, you could go in, they had Cokes and things, and you could kind of get out of the crowd a little bit. and. Because mm -hmm. we were taking guests a lot to Disneyland, mm -hmm. so. And you talked about one time somebody their clothes didn't arrive, and you had to go shopping for clothes. Well, I there, that. on a, several of the trips, the baggage didn't arrive. Uh huh. So yes, we'd have <laughs> to take them shopping. And today on the news, they were just talking about a place back east that has they buy all the baggage that's left in airports, a lot mm -hmm. of people leave or lose, mm -hmm. and then they sell this stuff. I never thought about that, but I bet they have some good things that are mm -hmm. they find there, because I know on the trips, you know, you 
Yeah. You learn to take certain things in a small bag, mm -hmm. like that you need clean underwear, things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. so that you're not completely out of clothes. But mm -hmm. Of course, we used to take too much anyway. You know, <laughs> now you see people with little bags. Uh -huh. I think they take a clean shirt and clean. <laughs> that's it. Uh -huh. Clean pair of socks. When you get on a plane now, does that like? Feel familiar? Uh, I haven't been since the COVID, so I haven't been on a plane. Uh, but I have. I, I tell. Besides the blimp, I've been on a balloon ride. They brought a balloon uh, from New Mexico Military Institute here, and we went up in that with a friend, and that was interesting to do. I, would, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I've done that. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I, that. But it was very interesting. Mm -hmm to the way it floats and, and they've gotten in trouble on some of those balloons because the wind picks up and next thing you know they're not in control mm -hmm. and the institute balloon did hit a fence once and the people we knew the people in it they weren't that hurt but it can be when you start reading that I, you think okay i've done that <laughs> don't need to do <laughs> it again don't need huh? to do it again but <laughs> when you think about your children and grandchildren were they adventuresome well, they lived in Southern California, and they, it's, I mean, you know, later you'd find it, the beaches there, Disneyland, I mean, you never knew. Once they were driving, mm -hmm. uh, you never knew where they were, and they went to school at uh, four of my grandchildren and, and my children and their spouses went to the University of California at Davis, so they were up in Northern California, mm -hmm. and no telling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they and once they were adults and no longer could be punished, that you right. heard more stories about where they had been and, and what they had they done. And when they say, Mother, remember when I told you, I don't tell me now. <laughs> <laughs> when I called you and said, I'm so-and-so, you know, well, then uh -huh. you can track them down pretty well. Now there's no excuse because they have cell phones. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, we went to Aspen, Colorado to go skiing, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it, I took my car. and sent a postcard to my parents from the top of the ski lift. Well, of course, that didn't get there for two weeks. So when we got back to Texas, the Texas Rangers stopped us because my father had called them to look for us and with the license and everything. So I had my share of adventures, too. <laughs> what was the consequence of that? I don't remember. I was in school. so They were just happy you were yes, alive. Yes, they and... were happy I was safe at that point, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... Yeah. Anyway, I went to Wisconsin to summer school because my sorority had a convention at um, oh, Island, Mackinac Island mm -hmm. up there, so we got to be in, in that kind of, mm -hmm. that part of the country, I'll put it that way, and that was a very interesting, mm -hmm. among my other trips, I remember being at Mackinac, there's no cars or there weren't at the time, you were mm -hmm. on an island, so. Mm -hmm. That's still a beautiful place yes, to go. It was very pretty mm -hmm. in that area. So then when we were in New Zealand, you know, they had the big schooners that are in America's Cup, so we got to go on one of those big mm -hmm. schooners and go around and they put them into work either what I don't know the terms for all the things they got to do, but they mm -hmm. made the men good your guest work on that and that was an interesting thing to get to see that from mm -hmm. inside the mm -hmm. schooner. And both you and your husband were open to adventure. Yes. To new experiences. Yes, I've had to slow down a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah. Slow down like breaking a leg? Yes, like that yeah. did change things quite a bit. <laughs> breaking a leg and then the pandemic uh, mm -hmm. on top of it. So now we're just, I'm in here, I love Westminster, but things change, we've learned you have to be flexible mm -hmm. at this stage because things have changed in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And you were at another facility? Yes, because I had to get in one. I had broken my leg and when I got out of the rehab, I lived with my daughter six weeks, but I got in one that was smaller than this and I was on the first floor so it was easier. Mm -hmm. But that, that was in quarantine about 10 days after I moved in and that's when I, I didn't understand what was happening out of there because we were quarantined. We couldn't leave unless it was medical. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't realize the shelves were getting empty and 
all mm -hmm. that was going on and my daughter kept saying nothing's happening out here out, <laughs> out of where you are but it was hard to believe mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we were well protected with we, you know we're all here so mm -hmm. and it was hard to get to know people I would think yes with but bridges help me <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm like my ambassador uh, we could play bridge and that's how I got to meet a lot of people in mm -hmm. where I was and in here too mm -hmm. so and they have a lot of classes in here now, you mm -hmm. know, balance classes, yoga, tai chi, mm -hmm. so and a lot of uh, courses you can take. And mm -hmm. so there's no excuse not to have a way to meet people. Mm -hmm. Did your husband play bridge too? He did, but he didn't care for it as much as mm -hmm. as I did. So mm -hmm. and because. I was in assistance league here and we had a bridge marathon group so we'd go play with different people all around. I was in assistance league in, in California too and they do a lot of good. They clothe children for schools and all that. Mm -hmm. And then I did volunteer at Honor Health Hospital. It was Scottsdale, uh, what was it called? Anyway, it wasn't Honor Health but I was there 15 years I volunteered so that was an interesting. Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed being around people. Mm -hmm. So, and you're good at being around yeah, people. Thank you. <laughs> and you have a super sense of humor. Well, <laughs> my brother did too. The brother with Parkinson's just punned. He was punning all the time. His mind was to click with you when you said something, and mm -hmm. uh, so he was kind of fun to be around. <laughs> and that was a younger brother. Yes, the one, yeah. Both my brothers are younger, younger. but he was the youngest. And my dad did, too. I was always embarrassed, he, you know, when people came to dinner or something and he'd do these puns all the time. <laughs> he had a big sense of humor, too. Uh-huh. So. And do you think you'd be embarrassed today? No. Mm -hmm. But I was, as, you know, as when my, my, my friends were there. I don't remember anybody's dad, other dads, <laughs> that were like, like that. But I think back on it and it... Uh -huh. it, yeah, he had a good sense of humor. I uh, once had a good friend who was good at punning, and I was very envious. I thought that would be fun to do, to think like that. Well, we, our group that worked at the hospital, we were the Monday morning group. We were at the front desk, and we got very good at it because we had one man with us who had been married a couple of times, and we kept advising him. He didn't, well, anyway, he was sorry. So we got really sarcastic. We got some good puns. In. So that was fun. I enjoyed that. Uh huh. A good laugh always feels yes, good, it right? Breaks the ice. And uh huh. You've right. got to look at life. Everybody has things that happen in their life, and you just have to kind of get humor along with it, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you have, with all of the weddings that you've been having in your family, were there any unexpected, funny things behind the scenes? Wedding-wise, no. I, offhand, I can't think of. They just well, you get a wedding planner now, and they just you just go do the wedding mm -hmm. planner runs it. Mm -hmm. So you go down the aisle when <laughs> she tells you, and and they run things. So, but. My parents, you know, they just had friends that helped them out, so I'm mm -hmm. sure things happened. But I was just glad my father was alive to give me away because he died right after my first one was born. So mm -hmm. I thought I was fortunate to have him there for mm -hmm. that. And then my brother in Dallas got married, and his uh, wife was from Dallas, and they were very big Catholics. And I remember my mother got so upset because she put on the rehearsal dinner and had everybody placed, and the other mother of the bride came in and changed it to her liking, and my mother was not real happy about that. <laughs> Things like that people do, I guess. <laughs> there were some fam undercurrents. Of well, yes, the, uh, they were Catholic, and the father, they kept moving him, you know, to be next to him, I guess. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that didn't set well with my mother. <laughs> I think that probably still goes on at some weddings. Yeah, I'm sure mm -hmm. there are mistakes. And when you think later, you need have something that happened, you laugh about it now. Well, I remember my mother telling my, my husband was so thrilled that his friends were there that he wasn't ready to leave for the honeymoon. And she <laughs> said, it's time for you to go. Yeah, I, I don't know how that reflected on me, but... <laughs> 
Anyway, it was like a big reunion. Uh huh. And he didn't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever forgive him? Yeah. <laughs> they got along later. So, anyway, I'm trying to think where else what happened. Well, when we, our last trip, as we were guests of Goodyear, and it was to Germany, and my husband had been stationed there, and it was interesting to see that the wall had come down, and we got a piece of the wall. You could mm -hmm. buy it, a little mm -hmm. chunk of it, but he was there, and the wall was very much a part of the division mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then we were there in 92, and we actually went to Berlin and Hamburg. They aren't, maybe I wouldn't have picked that, but we took the train from Berlin, so mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting to mm -hmm. see what had happened later. Mm -hmm. And when we were with Goodyear to a trip to Berlin before, we got to go to Potsdam, and that's what I, you know, that's where the agreements were after the war. So mm -hmm. it was in, at the time we just kind of partied on those trips and had <laughs> fun, but now that I'm mm -hmm. here and think back what all I saw, it's very interesting to. Mm -hmm go back and find out what I'd seen that I couldn't remember. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We once had a friend who, when we would travel, he would take a picture and say, I'll read it when I get home. <laughs> and it was like, no, we're here. We want to experience uh, The funniest it. story I ever heard was somebody bought a disposable camera. I heard this at, uh, we were in Texas at the time, and I went in a camera store, and he said, those people, and so they thought, okay, it's disposable. So they'd take pictures and then throw it in the trash. I don't know what they thought was going to happen, but they went all on their trip throwing cameras in the trash when they got through because it was disposable. And I guess they thought somehow the pictures got there where they could be uh, mm -hmm. printed. And I thought, well, that, that's kind of funny. But that's the same thing with an iPhone. If you lose mm -hmm. your iPhone, I've got like 2,000 pictures in there. Mm -hmm keep thinking I need to do something to keep them. You need to send them to the cloud. Yes. <laughs> Whatever the cloud is, yeah. <laughs> so, well, when you think about the different stages and ages, do you have any favorite times? Well, growing up we were in a small town and it was innocent. I mean, you know, you weren't worried about locking your door all the time, and mm -hmm. we live so differently than people do now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that I'd want to go back again and be a teenager, but uh, mm -hmm. college life was different. Mm -hmm. you, you know, had a good time there and learned a lot. But when I got out of college, it was, I was a business major, and, and it was none of this thing. Now you can, it was like you can go be a secretary now, and that's what I did. And I think of the women now, you know, they're mm -hmm. geared for mm -hmm. careers and mm -hmm. more like that. We just weren't geared that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I, I have used my business skills in a lot of ways, but I didn't per se uh, pursue mm -hmm. a career. Interesting. It wasn't like you were in management then. No. You manage the house and you manage the, you know, the kids and mm -hmm. so your husband could be free to do whatever. He traveled a lot mm -hmm. and, uh, and they always, I thought it was so stupid that Goodyear had their meeting, their yearly conference back in Akron right before Thanksgiving. So all these men would be trying to get home the night before <laughs> Thanksgiving. And one time there was a small, we lived in Southern California a small plane crash from the airport that had to, to, to our airport close to us. And so I sat there thinking I'm a widow probably, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, to schedule things that time of year when everybody's traveling, it's like now, once the pandemic ended, everybody was out there traveling. And it, even though the weather was bad, people were trying to get places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if there had just been more women in management, they would have <laughs> would take thought about that. that. There you go. Mm -hmm. Probably, I think so, they mm -hmm. would have a different aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But most of my friends, I guess, taught or they were in secretaries or they got married. And mm -hmm. uh, Well, you were in some ways like a military wife. Mm -hmm. He would be gone mm -hmm. and then he'd be present, gone and present. So. 
even when he was working in Southern California, he'd have to leave at 5.30 in the morning to get into L.A. from where we lived, or he would not get there till 9.00. Mm -hmm. So he was on the road a lot then. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you had the friends in the area. Mm -hmm. And you made friends easily. Yes. I joined my uh, sorority alum group. I learned to do that everywhere we moved, so I have some good friends still mm -hmm. in California. And what sorority was that? Alpha Phi. Mm -hmm. And my mother was an Alpha Phi, so hmm. they were sorority. Her sisters, Alpha Phi's and Kappa's. Mm -hmm. And of the many places you've been, Monaco, Monaco was an interesting place. Yes, right. I think it's very interesting. And we were in the hotel that's over where they would have the car races, went right under through the hotel there. Uh, I just think the whole setup there, uh, because it's so compact and of course so many boats and people, wealthy people there, but the big casino, uh, we look forward to seeing because you'd seen it in movies and everyone was always dressed to the hilt. Mm -hmm. And we went, and they weren't that dressed up. I was very <laughs> disappointed. But we like to play blackjack, and I found out they can play on your hand. Now, a lot of people stand behind you, and they would put their money down with mine, and then they would say, why did you do that? And I thought, I'm playing the hand. I didn't know they could do that. I've never seen that. I don't know if Las Vegas you can play on a hand. Mm -hmm. I've I not seen it, though, but that was a shock to me. But mm -hmm. it was fun to play there at the tables mm -hmm. where movies had been made. And, mm -hmm. But because that's when we had gone to Paris and then Monaco. We were in Paris. And, mm -hmm. and what did your husband experience when he was playing with somebody the second-guessing him? I don't, second know. I don't, I don't <laughs> know. He didn't say. I just had a man behind me. Probably they didn't bother him as much mm -hmm. as they thought they could tell me how to play, you know. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> But, I, in fact, at our last place that I went to, they had a nickel blackjack, and we played that. I played poker here and a lot of those card games. Mm -hmm. You get to know the people, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember how much money I bet there at the casino in Monaco. But the, another interesting trip we had was a, a Goodyear trip, and we got on in Baltimore, and then they pulled in, like, Atlantic City. They gave us money to gamble at Trump's. I remember being at his uh, casino. Then they pulled in at New York City down by Wall Street, and we had a limo and money for the day. And then we got on, and I remember realizing how big New York was because we went down by Long Island, and you saw all those lights forever and ever. It was mm -hmm. so. Then we went to uh, not Martha's Vineyard, the other one, uh, Nantucket, and then ended up in Boston. And I thought, I'll, I hope to get back, and we haven't gone back. I would love to do that again, mm -hmm. and not another cruise like that. It was smaller ships mm -hmm. and you got we knew all the people on it it was a lot of fun to do that well it sounds like Goodyear really knew how to have a good time yes. I don't know if they travel like that now but they had a corporation that worked with you know for the trips mm -hmm. and they would honor their dealers that were uh, for having big sales mm -hmm. to buy them so that was always an incentive every year Mm -hmm. And we even, when, then when we moved here, we were with a dealer, and so we got to go on trips again mm -hmm. as guests. So we've been both of them, mm -hmm. both ends That's of wonderful. the spectrum. Well, I think you've made a wonderful decision when you came to Westminster. I think so, too. And uh, we're both on the third floor, and so we get yes. together a lot yes. <laughs> with our happy hours. Very friendly. And, mm -hmm. but... Um, your sense of humor is super. No. <laughs> for my dad, I guess. And I'm very, no. very glad you're here. I am too. So thank you for sharing your life. Well, thank and, you. Uh, giving us a window of who you've been yeah. and who you are. <laughs> What's well, been fun here, too. And, and a couple more weddings to go. Yes. <laughs> okay. And, uh, then more grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Thank you, uh -huh. Sharon. Thank you.